Hello everyone. This is another session of SEO's House. Uh, again, this year we are doing it virtually and this time too. And SEO's RAS is a, a conference or used to be a conference with various SEO topics. And today our guest will be Pavel Unger from Czechia. He's a freelance SEO consultant. He's going to talk about eShops and how to do faceted navigation or faceted filtering in proper way and to optimize it both technically uh, he's also going to talk about how to generate content for plenty of your categories that you have on your eShops and also he will address the issue of crawl budget and indexing of these multiple categories and duplicate content so Pavel welcome hello thank you for a warm welcome I am happy to be there again <laughs> again yeah because you you were to seos rust 2018 and both 19 i think yes i was but it wasn't online it was in person so it was it was more better much more better for me yeah. <laughs> all right so again welcome uh, welcome everyone uh from our participants uh, I'll just remind you that we can uh, answer your questions at Slido, so please uh, uh, in, enter your questions at Slido. I think you can find the link in chat. No, all right. We have already one question, but I think we can do this in the end. So, Pavel, please uh, start your presentation and you can uh, start your presentation. Yes, thank you. Okay, uh, can I start uh, my presentation? Yes. Daniel? Yeah, great. So, uh, filters or facilitated navigation is something I am very interested in for years. I think it is very important thing. And what is bad that not so many in shops and not so many web developers fully understand that and can prepare curlable and indexable faceted navigation. So uh, let's go. What is faceted navigation? It's something like this. Probably you saw it on some eShop. I, for example, choose a, a big website, eureka.cz and or.sk if you are from Slovakia. And you can see there is a list uh, of products and you can filter it with uh, some parameters like brand or um, size or color or something. And that's quite usual uh, that this is not something very special. But uh, why is faceted navigation important, especially for SEO? Because of when you uh, work with a faceted navigation as a user, you create great landing pages, which can rank for great keywords in search engines. For example, you can see a screenshot from some uh, outlet eShop, and uh, you can see uh, on the right side, there is a also facet navigation, and you can choose uh, size, you can choose color, and many other things. So for example, if this category, its name is, I don't know, uh, men t-shirts, and you just click on a size L, this uh, category became a landing page for men t-shirts L size, or red color, or black color, or anything you like. So as you probably understand, you can use facility navigation to create a lot of great landing pages which are targeting to very important keywords. The question maybe will be to which keyword I should run this uh, facet navigation. You probably should have uh, some uh, keyword research. There will be uh, keywords and phrases 
which tells you which combination are important. For example, you can also work with uh, quite great uh, automatization uh, on which content. Here you can see my, uh, my former client, alcohol.cz, and you can see automatization. Uh, in the middle, you can see filters, and there are brand, there are, uh, uh, there are price, there are some age. Of course, it's ARM because I like ARM. And you can see uh, the name of the landing pages. It's not just RAMs, but the name of the landing pages is fully automated and create really nice uh, heading, or which uh, shows you all the filters you can use. So maybe you just found out uh, if you use filters or faceted navigation properly, you can create thousands of, of amazing client pages. Sometimes if you have big issue, it could be millions of London pages and dozens of combination. That means if you do it right, lot of money from SEO. But do it right isn't so easy as you maybe uh, can imagine. So there are three parts of implementation, uh, filters and faceted navigation. Number one is technical background. So because of uh, search engines uh, can't click on forms in HTML, like we, like users, we can click on the filters, uh, which are mouse and uh, uh, the page will rewrite and show our the proper content. Uh, search engines cannot do it. So we need to help them to pass through the faceted navigation properly. So number one is JavaScript. So uh, uh, that uh, probably is not very easy for web developers. Uh, if we want to make filters and faucet navigation right for crawlers, for search engines, then we should use no JavaScript uh, for uh, HTML. Uh, and uh, so we need, if you turn off, JavaScript to see still links, content, and images. And links, that means all possible combination from filters. But sometimes you use, uh, I don't know, some JavaScript frameworks like Angular, React, or so on. And in this time, uh, we have a solution, SEO solution. Uh, first one is server-side rendering. Uh, this is something which your developer should know or something more specific for SEO needs. Uh, and it's dynamic rendering. Dynamic rendering is something uh, you can read on um, uh, pages for developers on Google sites. So this is something uh, then you have JavaScript uh, website. This rendering services can uh, put or create or render uh, only HTML version of your JavaScript website for curlers. So that's uh, number one. Second, if you want to make your filters crawlable, you have to put URL somewhere in the source code. So uh, here, there's this screenshot from website hyworka.cz. And there you can see there is a label uh, and behind the label is normal uh, proper link. So href something and of course anchor text. And if uh, there is nothing like this, curl can see the URL and he can't curl it. So, uh, there is a second uh, have to, and this means you have to put URL somewhere in the source code, but the URL in the source code 
uh, have to be visible also without JavaScript, which I mentioned in the last slide. And now uh, let's imagine what we're trying to create. Try to imagine a website where are no filters and all combination which uh, became from filters uh, have to be uh, run as a some uh, part of labyrinth or clickable uh, stairs or something. So uh, let's go deep. So imagine we have category notebooks. On the notebooks category, there are a lot of filters. And uh, for example, one of uh, these filters will be brand. So there will be Lenovo, there could be Apple, there could be anything uh, from uh, famous uh, computer brands. And uh, Curler come to the category notebooks and he should click on some of uh, these possibilities. He choose, for example, Lenovo brand. After that, he click on this URL. He uh, just now is on other website, other landing page, and this is Lenovo notebooks. So he goes a little bit deeper. After that, he can see uh, another filters, for example, some, uh, some hard disk parameters. One of these parameters could be SSD. He click on this and he enter to the landing page, which uh, name is uh, Lenovo Notebooks with SSD hard drive, etc, etc, etc. So we have to uh, prepare our website clickable for uh, crawlers and every combination of our parameters is proper web page, is proper landing page with, with proper URL. So how to create the right URL for filters? So what I suggest is uh, normal uh, URL structure uh, could be like this, that is the black color. Uh, what I suggest is to use something specific, this is uh, in red color on this slide, which you can say, okay, this specific letters or something mean filters. So for example, you can do slash F slash, or you can do uh, slash F and something uh, because of uh, if you want to see how filters are working in Google Analytics, you have to filter it easily. Of course, you can do it in some more complicated way, but I think it's quite easy and uh, it works well for the, for the filters. And after that, you have something which represent filters in the URL, you can put your parameters uh, in normal way. So uh, you can see uh, my favorite uh, solutions. So you can use F slash uh, brand slash SSD. So in this case, notebooks slash F slash Lenovo ampersand SSD. So maybe you know, just now have a question. What about query strings? Are parameters in the URL okay or not? Yes, they are okay. It's perfectly fine for curlers. It's perfectly fine for Google, Sysnam, or Bing, probably uh, Yandex, but I'm not very well experienced in uh, Yandex SEO. So it's absolutely okay if you use it, but there is, one big bug, use every time, same order. So for example, if you have, have these parameters, uh, Lenovo Ultrabook SSD, and uh, user click on different, uh, a different order. So for example, Lenovo SSD Ultrabook, uh, all the filters, 
all the query parameters have to be in the same order, always. It is very important. Uh, I know that Google tells that's okay for us, we can solve it, but I have my empowering personal experience that uh, this two URLs, URLs are not uh, the same for Google. So that could be a duplicate. And of course, there is something uh, what is quite common uh, for our, our SEOs, and this is stable and unique URL. So every URL you create in filters have to be stable and unique. And of course, probably a lot of you uh, mentioned then in um, uh, uh, June or July, I think it was in June, Google ran page experience update. So uh, the speed is very important. So if you work with your web developers on facility navigation or filters, one of the goal have to be speed. It should be fast. Second part is a content automatization. So we are talking just uh, here about something technical. And now uh, we have unique URL, but the content is not unique. So we have to solve it. First thing uh, what we can do is to use something like variables. Uh, there are some common variables uh, we use very often. It's name of the category, name of the brand, color, size, anything you use in filters. And after you have this and you can use it in your content, you can use really great automatization. I can show it how it works. So for example, you want to create unique title on every combination of filters. That's important. You know, uh, Google doesn't like uh, duplicates. I don't like duplicates. You yeah. don't like duplicates. So we can use uh, these variables to prepare uh, any uh, title to be really unique. So here, uh, here we are. So I can use um, I can use color, uh, category, some text, and for example, min price and brand. And after that, uh, this uh, title can make a lot of really unique and different titles. So for example, there should be best third shirt starting uh, 100 CZK or best blue shirt or best, I don't know, uh, trousers or anything you want. So you can put uh, these variables in the title or meta description or uh, H1 heading or products or anything, and you can create a really unique content on every combination of filters. And after that, you can see uh, there is a screenshot from uh, ishabglami.cz, which uh, used this automatization well. And uh, you can uh, see her here how it works. But before you go with this automatization online, of course, you need to test it. Every category, every combination is a little bit different. So sometimes it can be not very good. And you have to check it if every combination uh, create really good text, which is good for users, for our customers, and of course, uh, for the search engines. After that, you can go live and you have really amazing snippet, uh, which is fully automated. And, uh, but for users, it works very well. But maybe in the end, uh, you, uh, maybe think, okay, I can make it, but we have a really huge issue. And that means, I don't know, thousands, hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of combination. Is it right for SEO? Not 
really. So that's the third part of the working with faceted navigation, and that's the curl budget optimization. What is a what is a curl budget? A uh, curl budget is something the uh, maybe uh, some computing time which crawler uh, can um, uh, allow for your for your website. It depends on speed of your website, of number of URLs about the content, and uh, if you uh, work it without uh, any uh, optimization for curl budget, uh, it, it probably doesn't work very well because we have dozens of URLs and we, not, we don't need every URL have to be in index. It's not Pokemons. Uh, so we go back to our keyword research and we will find which combination are searchable, which have a quite big uh, amount of search volume. And this combination uh, we use for allowing and the rest we disallow for curlers. Uh, the idea behind is, yes, we have some important combination of filters and some of them are not important. And this, these which are important, we make indexable and curlable and the rest will be non-curlable. Uh, for example, uh, we decide that important filters are brand and color. So we use our world something like this. So you can see F added as and black and, and NE parameters means that uh, the warehouse parameter is something I don't want to curl. This is the first thing. So if you use something you don't uh, need to curl, you have to put in the URL something which you can uh, easily manage in robots uh, TXT. Uh, next thing uh, is row of three. You also have to disallow in robots TXT uh, more combination of three filters. Uh, we know from uh, data based on uh, keyword research that users that doesn't use probably from some psychological reasons, uh, they don't use uh, more than uh, three uh, filters in the search engines. So for example, they wrote data, hey, I want the fridge and I want uh, Bosch and white, or they use uh, fridge, Bosch with freezer by then don't they don't use it more than three so we can uh, disallow also more than three uh, parameters uh, in robots dxt and also you can disallow uh, something we call multi-choice so for example if you have uh, more um, values in one filter for example you want by phone and you will not put in the search engine, I want mobile phone and three brands. I don't know, Apple, Nokia, Samsung, Xiaomi, or something like this. You put only one, we know that. We know this from uh, keyword research. So we can also disallow this thing. So when we know which uh, URLs, which combination of filters, which make unique URLs, are not important for us. We put there some specific uh, uh, query parameter. I use, for example, uh, an E something, an E mint no index. Uh, and uh, it's very easily to disallow this in robots text. You can see this on this slide. And maybe some of you will ask you, what if I use no index? We don't use no index because no index care is not very friendly for a curl budget because a crawler will find 
no index in uh, meta robot stack after he download the URL. So uh, if you put no index, that means it's not very good for a robot. But what could help, could help, it's not sure, uh, you can put a uh, rel nofollow on every link to non-important URL. It's, I think it's a uh, quite good practice. And if it's possible, we can do that. But uh, Google say that he used nofollow attribute only as a suggestion, not a directive. So if you can do that, I think it's also okay. And after that, you can only create the sitemap of all uh, URL which are important. And after that, you can go live. When you go live, you need to test it uh, and uh, check in, in the Google Search Console a uh, few types. First, which is very uh, essential for a budget, is discovered currently not index. That means that Corolla knows this URL, but he doesn't uh, uh, crawl it. Oh, and of course, it's not indexed too. And uh, there is similar curled, but not indexed. So the URL is curled, but Google decided not to put this URL to the index. If you can see issues like this, you need to fix it. Uh, probably, if you see this, uh, there could be a curl budget problem. So uh, you don't have uh, not a big amount of uh, curl budget for, for a website. Uh, so you need to uh, make some optimization techniques to solve it. Or uh, uh, there's the situation with curl not index, that probably means that the contents, it's not interesting enough for Corolla. So create better uh, content. And after that, you can repeat it again, again, and again. So, uh, and this is quite common for us, for SEO consultants. So that's all for me. And I hope you like it or you are interested in, in uh, this solution of feature snippet. And if you have any question on discussion, I am open to this. Thank you, Pavel. Very interesting presentation. I think we have a few questions. So let's start uh, with one, or actually there are two that uh, concern uh, the length of generated content. Do you have some recommendation on the minimum length to make sure yeah, that there is uh, some interesting content, it's not just thin content, and also that yeah. it's not a duplicate content to other pages? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, in faceted navigation, it, it is uh, something different from other pages, I think. I asked it uh, personally, uh, to John Miller, uh, if there is okay to make automated content in facilitated navigation, navigation uh, and he said, yes, it's perfectly fine because we fully understand, we as a Google, uh, understand that facilitated navigation is something special and something different from normal web pages. So uh, uh, for title and meta description, I used normal length. So, um, on uh, titles is something about 50 or uh, 60 letters and meta description is something about 150, 60 or something like this. And uh, uh, maybe, by, but maybe the question uh, was asking more to headline and, uh, and the text in the beginning of, of the web page. Yeah, I, I, think, think, I think so. This was about the category content, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for me, I think that one paragraph is absolutely okay. Two or three sentences is perfect. So it uh, doesn't have to be something uh, very long. Uh, I think uh, something um, like maybe a little more than meta description. Okay, thank you. Um, let's... 
okay let's skip the questions about youtube i mean about uh, this webinar online yes this webinar will be online later on our youtube channel in the playlist that i posted in in the chat here in zoom so just save that link and you'll be uh, able to access it later so there's this is interesting question about using javascript solution to um no index the the faceted filters that we don't want google to index how about using javascript uh, for links that we don't want to in index well uh yes uh that's a tricky question so uh first thing we know that google can render javascript somehow but we also know he doesn't use it every time. So if you use only JavaScript of uh, uh, our prevention not to be curled, I think that uh, could be, you could uh, be lucky uh, and uh, he can render it. And after that, we have this situation in Czech Republic, uh, I think, uh, some guys from, I don't know, if it was it a taste agency or something, have used this and Google render all the web pages. And after that, they have millions of indexed uh, URLs. So I don't think it's a 100% good solution. It could, work, it could work, but I'm a little bit afraid of the rendering, which Google use can use if he want to so i don't suggest to do it do this this way great um i really like the slide where you were actually showing the uh indexable and non-indexable categories or the faceted uh, filters where people should look at the more important ones and uh, index those and uh, de-index the the less important ones but let's talk about some larger e-shops, maybe having 30 different uh, options to filter results. So how, how do they decide what are their most important uh, filters to be indexed? Uh, it, can, can we decide about, or can we base this on some data, for example, from keyword analysis or what's your approach to this? Yeah, yeah. I used uh, keyword analysis and I will check uh... Uh, uh, the search volume, that's the number which I use the most. So, but it depends. For example, if you sell on the eShops common like, like fridges, mobile phones, then the limit of the search volume could be higher. I don't know, 100 or 200 per month. But if you sell something uni, which is very specific, the limit could be lower. I don't know, for example, 20 per month or 30 or 50. So yes, uh, check your keyword research, uh, check the combination of the keywords which people use and according search volume, you decide which is important and which is not important for you. Thanks. And now we have some questions about uh, e-commerce e systems. So we have a question uh for wordpress and we have a question for shop that i don't know if you are uh familiar i'm sure you are familiar with wordpress and probably with shop that too and people are asking if you have some recommendations on plugins for uh, woocommerce for wordpress and if shop mm. that is also usable from this perspective of faceted filtering yeah i don't have uh experience with woocommerce because I have not any clients which use this. So, but I'm afraid uh, this is something which is very specific and I'm not too sure, I don't know it sure, but I can check it, but I don't think that WooCommerce have something like this, but I don't know it for sure. So maybe yes, but I don't know anything about it. And, and what about ShopTet? Shop yes, ShopTet is something between. So uh, if you know ShopTet well and you have something, probably in English, it, it will be advanced SEO module, which you can buy, uh, then you can use it 
uh, but you can you can use it uh, fully as I present today. So uh, many of this you can use. Uh, you can uh, make some automatization, you, uh, but you because ShopTet is a I don't know how to say it in English some. Uh, uh, ready-made solution and you can't uh, work with the technical issues so you can use just the stuff which shop that has so it is possible it's not easy to manage it uh, and it's not possible in a full way i explained but i don't know in 60 70 percent uh, you can make it and, and possibly also options for uh, automatic generation of content are limited in, in yeah in exactly they stuff. can yeah yeah exactly exactly yes that's the problem yeah okay and um, what what do you think about using canonicals for example in the in what's your opinion on using canonicals for the indexing part of the content uh, from from facet yeah. filtering uh i prefer not to use canonical for uh, when we are talking about facilitated navigation, uh, because there's the same situation like the no index in the robots. Because uh, if search engine want to know if the page is canonicalized or not, he have to download it and check in the headline if there is canonical or not. And every download will take something little from the curl budget. So I don't suggest to use canonical in facilitated navigation, navigation because of curl budget. All right, uh, thank you. Um, then we have a bunch of different questions. So let's maybe start with the financial point of view. There is one question addressing this, that uh, this or your, your uh, solution requires lots of changes from their point of view, what's the, smallest or what's the yeah smallest i guess project that they can start uh, thinking about this maybe let's let's address this question this way um if we have limited uh money for seo so limited budget maybe how long this process is going to take to maybe to to, to do changes on eShop to generate content automatically to resolve all these technical issues what's your mm -hmm. what's your time uh frame yeah. that you work with with your clients usually and uh, and maybe also mention some issues that pro programmers have when implementing this yeah uh Lubomir is right because if uh, the uh, website the web website developers doesn't uh, understand it and doesn't prepare it in the beginning it could be uh, very time consuming and of course uh, it should cost a lot of money that's right uh, uh, i suggest if you if you are in this situation and make uh, this uh, uh, ready will be very expensive i suggest to create specific categories which are optimized for the combination from the filters so you for example will have filters you disallow all filters in robots.txt but after that you just create specific few categories i don't know 10 20 or 30 manually and you can optimize this uh, pages for the combination from uh, keyword research. It's not a good solution, but when we are talking about money, it could work. Okay. Um, and in, in some maybe it's some time frame for the projects like this. If you have some uh, well use clients. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, when uh, I work in alcohol.cz, it's biggest e-shop for alcohol in, in Czech Republic, it takes, I don't know, uh, half and a year of one web developer. 
uh, if you have uh, uh, very uh, good web developers, I think uh, it could be faster. So I think few months of work uh, web developers. The hardest thing is uh, make the technical background. The uh, strategy or content is quite uh, easy and it doesn't take a uh, lot of time, but the technical ba uh, background is uh, very complicated. Yeah, thank you. Um, we have another question, maybe more about user experience, but I think this also touches SEO or technical implementation because uh, they are asking if, uh, what about the common problem when uh, you change the filters and the page reloads? And of course, in order to create new URLs, but, but uh, we know that there are techniques that you can create uh, new URLs even without reloading. Maybe you can yeah. Uh, yeah. drill down into this. Understand that. Uh, well, uh, I'm not a web developer, but on uh, my clients, when we use it, uh, when uh, there will be a user and use the filters, we use some JavaScript, which can uh, faster the process. But when we turn off JavaScript, the technical uh, background still works. So uh, users uh, have it fast and with JavaScript, but when uh, on this website comes something which can't render JavaScript websites, they use the slower version and it works fine, I think. Great, thank you. And there's an interesting question from Jan. If you can, for example, give some example, how to estimate uh, organic traffic that uh, you will gain from these changes in faceted navigation. Yeah. Again, again, and again, keyword research. Uh, go there uh, and you uh, can count together all keywords and all keyword combination and their uh, search volume. And after that you have, I don't know, it will be thousands, thousands of search volumes, maybe 10,000 or hundreds of thousands uh, search volume per month. And after that, you just need to check CTR of the uh, website. And if you know search volume and CTR, you probably uh, can estimate uh, the uh, organic traffic you can get from uh, use this solution. And one more thing, uh, I think that this solution I presented to you is not good just only search engines, but also for users. But for example, if you filter, I don't know, t-shirts and black, I think also for users is good if the headline uh, of the web page will be uh, black t-shirts, not just t-shirt. So for me, it uh, also do UX solution too. Yes, and another thing uh, maybe I would add is that they can share the URL then to their friends or via email or on social network and people will get directly to this landing page. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe I think the question is just repeat, but we have another question asking about the faceted navigation from the point of internal links. Uh, mm -hmm. What happens when there is only one internal link uh, from from the filter to I don't know where, but maybe to some products or another category? I don't yeah, know. Yeah. If you can. Yeah. Uh, so if we run facility navigation, uh, you will have links from the facility navigation, but um, way often it's not enough. So I suggest, uh, uh, but. Uh, some links for these filtered pages somewhere to categories, to articles, or anywhere scattered on the website. Uh, it's, uh, but not for every, uh, every uh, combination, just, I don't know, uh, make uh, for every month, I create, I don't know, 20 manual backlinks for these filtered pages. 
and next month another 20 and another 20 and in i don't know half in a year or year you uh, create great internal linking uh, for filter pages okay thank you and maybe another question that we haven't touched or topic that we haven't touched is the pagination how do you how do you work with the pagination and uh, and this facet in navigation how to combine it or maybe these days it's it's more or, or it's easier just to uh, load and load and do the the infinite scrolling instead so i don't know what's your point uh, what's your opinion on this yeah well uh that's uh, uh no question because it's quite uh, funny uh maybe uh you guys for you for you all which uh are you from the SEO industry? You remember it was funny that I don't know, two or three years ago, there was when John Miller somewhere says, okay, we use for pagination, Perl Next, and Trial Pref, and everything works fine. And two weeks later, he said, well, I check it with our developers and I found out we don't use it anymore. Yeah. So if we are, it was. It was quite funny. I was on a uh, in the UK on uh, on the conference in Brighton, and he was a very nice girl from the moderator about this. And uh, maybe someone uh, uh, was there uh, too. So after that, Google tell us we can find out what is pagination and what not, and we can't handle these pages as pagination. So basically, he says, do nothing we can make it all. And uh, yes, that's uh, my solution. What I try to do in pagination is make the URLs for pagination uh, clearly understandable. For example, there is, I don't know, uh, P1, P2, like page one, page two, something like this. Uh, it's easily to understand for the curlers. And sometimes when it's is it important for me, I put to the title and to the headline, in the end of the title or headline, uh, for example, page two from 22 or something like this. And that's all what I do because uh, 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 in Czech Republic, Saznam.c said, uh, said something similar. We don't use it, so don't do nothing. And Google say, yes, we can handle uh, this, do nothing. So I mostly do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, and I remember the the two years back or three years back when it happened that uh, all the webmasters or all the website owners were kind of angry that they implemented it maybe just recently and then exactly. we don't use it. So yes, yes. Okay, I think Pavel that we have taken enough of your time and I think we have also used all the questions and answered them. So. Thank you once again. Thank you to Pavel Unger, a freelance SEO consultant from Czech Republic that uh, was our guest today. I hope you enjoyed his presentation on the topic of faceted navigation and you will improve your websites accordingly. Uh, I am Daniel Durish and uh, from Basta Digital and I uh, thank you for participating today in another live session of SEOs RAS, although virtually this year, but hopefully maybe next year we will do it again in person. So thanks again, Pavel, and have a nice day, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.